Hi guys, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. What we're going to show you today is how to match a finish. Now if you look up, that finish there is very humpty, dumpty, wavy. This is old world plastering where they did two coats and their, the idea was give something intricate or interesting and I'll show you what, before I put this on, I'll show you what they don't want. You have to flip around here. Now, these fellas, you can see this one guy did this patch here and it didn't work. Then they had another guy come here and they did this one. All around the house, there's about 20 different textures. Fortunately, this is right where I could show what, what I'm referring to. And these guys, what they did is they did the scratch and brown. Then they took the trowel and they just made some divots. These guys went a little deeper with their divots. Uh, neither one is actually what they have because they just didn't go hard enough. They were on the right track. I'll show you how we get this, guys. I've done this, uh, oh, 50, 100 times. Now, we got a very heavy, heavy scratch. Uh, we want a, the brown to be just, just as heavy because the brown coat is, is where we're gonna get our finish. I'll show, I'll show you roughly what we're doing here. We're putting on it very heavy. Now, what I generally do is, I'll look at this. Okay, that's pretty heavy. You can go, the other fellas, they did this. Uh, you can do that, but it's not going to match what they have. Okay, what we're going to do is kind of give S shapes. We're going we're gonna to really pronounce this um, because it's got to be floated too. And what I'll do is I'll look at a wall and I'll see this guy went here and they left a big clinker there. And you look at it and say, well, gee whiz, that's way too rough. That's even rougher than what they have. But this got a set. And then when we use a green sponge float, I'll show you that part too, because that's what's going to soften this up a bit. Uh, I can't match that finish with just a trowel. I need to soften it up. So I'm gonna spread this out, spread this out. And when I get to the point where I'm uh, green sponge floating, I'll show you guys. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you one more thing while we're killing time. This got to set another 20 minutes before I could even do my texture. Dan says, Dad, I'll see how you're gonna make that look like that. Well, I'll show you guys how we do it and I'll show you too, Dan. As far as these corners go, Dan also said, why'd you even put a corner when their corner is very humpty, very wavy. I don't know if you can get a uh, shot of that, but that corner is so humpty and wavy. When they did this house, they did a scratch coat they let it set 48 hours, they came back and they did a brown coat. And you can do that where you just put your scratch coat on and take it both ways and allow that to set. Me, I put a corner aid when we lapped this and I smashed it, so just to give it some extra strength. Hold off one minute, Dan. And here's what I'll generally do now. This, this corner is it's not bull nose, it's just jagged. So I'll start from the bottom and I'll put a little bit on here, go on up, up a little bit and then I'll take it this way. So I'm making it jagged now, and just going that way. I'll put it on, make it jagged. And also when, and that's pretty jagged, and I want it like that because that's what I have to do in order to match what they have. I'll show you and get one more hawk full. Okay. I'm gonna continue what I just started because I'm killing time now. Here, here. Here, there. And if I need more on this side, what I'll do is, let me get over here, and just put it here, and go this way. Put it here, pull it up that way. Here, what I'm basically doing is uh, jagging it out. I have a habit to wanna make a pretty corner on this. I gotta keep reminding myself, don't make it pretty, make it jagged. So. That's how we do that. We're going we're to be, again, this got to take another 20 minutes and then we're going to, I'll show you how to float it all, including leaving this corner here jagged. Okay guys, now what we're doing is, we're, give, we're keeping the humps. Now, what I like to do is I'm using the triangle of my float. If I just use my edge like this, it gets too sharp, but you can't see what I'm doing. I'm using the edge. The triangle. So, and I'm always, I'm going upward because we're on a real cold day. It's damn cold today. And we have an inch and a half in some areas because of the humps. So it has a tendency to want to drag and fall. So we're using, again, that corner. We're going this way. 
going that way. We're always going upward. If it was a 100 degree day, I can go any which way and not worry about it coming down. But because it's cold and because we're still not 100% dry, we just keep going upwards and that allows it to dry out. The float is opening it. It's, it's allowing both coats to dry out. And a second ago, Dan said, Dad, they don't have the seagull look. And I thought, that's a good question. Show, go over here for a minute. You see this wall, okay, 60 years ago when they did this, there was scaffold right here and scaffold right here. One guy was up here, that's why the whole top is different. One guy was in the middle and he has what we call, looks like a seagull, the wings, the wings of a seagull. And then down here is a different guy. Now even if I was doing this whole wall myself, this is tough to get it exactly perfect on all three levels. I don't know, I think I could do it. I'm sure you could. Uh, but getting back to over here, uh, on this gable here, this doesn't have, show over here, Dan, this gable doesn't have one seagull, so to speak. What it, what it has is, is the finish we're doing. So we're matching this wall. We're not matching the house wall. So uh, again, that, we just go over and over it. And right now, because I'm floating it heavy, Theirs is a little lighter, so what we're going to do is after about another half hour, this is how long it's going to take me, at least another half hour of bringing this aggregate out and leaving these humps on. Then I'm going to hit it one more time with the trowel lightly, and that'll push the grains in, and then I'll hit it one more time with the float, and that'll give me that, that finish right there where it's a lot smoother than what I have. Let's see, last tip is if you got a ridge that's sticking out and it's too sharp, you can hit the ridge with the float. Just hit it a little bit and that'll smooth it out because theirs is very smooth and they have plus 20 coats of paint on it. Last thing before I finish too is on these corners which are very jagged, I'm using just the heel, the heel or the toe of my float and I'm going upward, upward each different way, upward. If I use the whole body of it, what I tend to do is straighten that out. I don't want it straight. Anyhow, when we get done, Jason and I will, will show you the whole completion and what it looks like. All right, guys, we're complete with that. Everything matches. And again, we're matching this particular gable, not something else. This particular texture, for me, it's uh, incredibly easy. It's just time consuming. You have to know all your cements and, and when to hit them and what to do and how to use your tools. But anyhow, um, there you have it. And that is how to do that. It's Friday evening. It's Jay's birthday. I promised him I'd take him to the bar and give him a couple of shots of Irish whiskey. So as usual, folks, we'll see you guys on the next one.